So in my last video I did a quick review of these, um, the highs and lows that I've found in the last 12 months of using one. And in this video I'm going to go over just uh, some of the points in the patch bay and a few geeky tips and tricks about how these are designed. One of the reasons I love the sound of the DFAM so much is because of the triangle wave. I think it gives it some of the sweetest sounds. The triangle wave for this is produced by actually joining this saw or ramp with a reverse saw or inverted ramp. And there's a trim pot inside where the square wave is used as a switch to flip the ramp. And apparently there's a slight offset to it in the triangle which can be adjusted by trimming it at the duty cycle. According to the engineers, just by that there's a test point which could be connected to a pot to introduce PWM to the square, which will also give a variable triangle, and both saws either forward or reverse. The sequencer clock itself is a sawtooth VCO with a frequency of about 600 Hz, giving between 10 BPM and 10,000 BPM. So in another application of the device we could use the tempo out as an LFO. Now Steve Dunnington, who hosted, um, who's one of the designers who hosted the DFAM workshop at Moogfest in 2017, he says that the reason it doesn't have a reset, which is one of the biggest bugbears with it, um, you have to advance to 8 next time you want to record anything, is that it simply ran out of time to include one, as he was focused on having jacks for each of the envelope generators, and couldn't spare a jack for having a trigger reset, as the sequencer wasn't as important as the overall sound. And indeed, I think that when Moog released these for the Moogfest, they really weren't planning on using them as a production model, as a full production model, until much later when they saw the actual demand for them. And this, amongst other reasons, explains the sparse sequencer and also the lack of MIDI. Now, the lack of MIDI is a bugbear for a lot of people, and for, and for me too, really, although syncing it, it, it's not impossible. It can be done fairly easily using the trigger inputs and the advanced clock. And another tip for syncing it, if you're using, say, like a door, is to send a metronome audio pulse from the door to the clock input. Just don't forget to manually advance it to step 8 before you start playing. So if we look at the patch bay on this, um, we begin with the XDIN, the external audio. Now this is 3.5 TS input only. It's designed for Eurorack signal levels of 10 volts peak to peak. Headphone style TRS leads, they won't work. So to play audio from an MP3 or a phone, that audio needs to be preamped first. All of these points, by the way, they're, they're, they're covered in the manual. If you haven't read the manual, read the flipping manual. It, it's well worth it. They've put a lot of time and effort into it, which makes a change for manufacturer and so many handy hints in there. These tiny pitch knobs, by the way, they have a 10 octave range working on a plus to minus 5 volts. Um, which gives 10 volts on the patch bay. The velocity knob sets the amplitude of all three envelopes per step and that works on a 0 to 5 volts and that's the voltage available for the output on there on the patch bay also. I've made quite a few videos now covering semi-modular equipment and, and one thing that I keep going back to is that um, the design of semi-modular is that it, it's already patched behind the scenes. It has a normalized default routing and when we're patching where we patch into, it breaks the default routing from where the signal would normally be coming from and it, it helps to understand if we look at the signal path, the default routing for the DFAM, which I'll show here. So when we're patching in, we're breaking where that signal would be normally coming from. The exemption to this obviously is where patch points are summed to the original sources. The patch points which are summed in the DFAM are the VCA, VCF and VCO decay, the 1 to 2 FM amount and the tempo is also summed to the position of the tempo knobs. Now the trig in triggers all three envelope generators and with summing those which are summed, they're summed to the position of the corresponding pots. So external CV would produce clipping or very hot signals if you're using external CV it's best to centre the DFAM pots to allow for wider variations in incoming control voltage because that voltage will be obviously summed, added on. You can also check the manual for suggested knob settings for when using the patch bay. I'm not going to cover the individual points on these. Um, these they're available in the manual and they're also reasonably self-explanatory. So really all we need to remember is other than the summed inputs which I've already mentioned is that when patching in that breaks the internal normalisation from where the signal was coming from in the first place. 
If you do have any comments or questions about these, leave them in the comments below. And please do check out my other videos that they do touch on topics very, very similar to the DFAM and do give a more in-depth look at semi-modular equipment. So if you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe and many thanks.